Welcome back, everyone. This is the Soccer Talks Lads podcast, Soccer Talk Lads podcast. Talks I got lads. out like five words before we made more. <laughs> We're back. We are uh, returned from a, a long and unplanned hiatus of the kind that we've never had before mm. and we'll never have again. That's right. It's very uncharacteristic for us to be gone for. That's right. Checking oh. <laughs> in from Northeast Florida, a hub of soccer, I'm told by no one. <laughs> My name is Stephen Ground and joining me from both of you are in St. Louis, correct? Yeah, baby. That's right. That's right. The real city, if you will. Uh, just I guess technically I'm in Concord uh, for those of you who know your South County uh, oh, no. municipalities. So. I didn't even know Concord was a municipality. <laughs> yeah, wasn't there like a battle there? Wasn't there a revolutionary <laughs> battle there? <laughs> Justin, you uh, you're the you're a big journalist. You're a real official, real time credential mm -hmm. journalist right. on this podcast. They let me touch the field today. So, yeah. and we by that I mean I touched the field. <laughs> yeah, we don't deserve to have you. Um, and Ian, you are also here. <laughs> That's right. I have been on a field. <laughs> Ian, you are our only accredited credentialed Tottenham fan on this podcast. Mm, that's so, right. Don't congratulations, you forget. <laughs> and I'm sorry. Uh, folks, it's official. St. Louis City SC has started training camp on their inaugural season. And Justin was there today to tell that us was. all about it. But before we do that, Ian, it's been a while since you've been on the podcast, mm -hmm. even longer than since we were last on the podcast. This is uh, the St. Louis City released a list of the players on this team this year yeah we got numbers so folks far. we got numbers and uh some hints at well more than some most of what the roster will look like come the start of the season ian i'd like you to run us through these numbers and these players please Ooh, to the best uh, of your ability uh, <laughs> okay now brown cow i don't know uh, a lot of asmr and get real close and whispers. the human torch was denied a bank <laughs> Let's you know, it. this is good because we have a lot New of York. we have a lot of international influence on this on this roster list, and I think it's important for people that we know the proper pronunciation. So that's where you come in strong, Ian. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I will say them, and then we will hear the proper pronunciation. Um, okay, start, starting strong. Number one, Roman Berkey. All right, not not to be confused with Roman Reigns. Mm, Although right. Roman Berkey, contractually speaking, is the head of our table. That's so. right. I also that's like right. how Ian is approaching this like it's a quiz. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is every every. I would like you to know that every person's name does not have a question mark at the end of it. <laughs> it's just how I will be doing it. Uh, number two, Jake Nerwinski. That's easy enough, right? Num so. mm -hmm. Number four, Joachim Nilsson. Number six, oh, ah, shit. Um, <laughs> I saw someone tweet out how to pronounce this, and I've forgotten. Nabulo Blom. <laughs> not even close. Not even close. Justin, you want to help us on that? Yeah, one? I will say I did practice uh this name a lot before my video, uh, but Jabulu Bloom is what I believe is how made is Blom, but Jabulu which is a fun name to say. <laughs> I will I will get that never. I will get that one time. Oh, here we I, go. We I'll give myself one, one time. You know uh, it's no. going to be good when there's a lot of ac accents in the name, so I'm looking forward to this one. Oh, God. <laughs> it's uh, Tomas Ostra. Already wrong. Oh, God. <laughs> Number That's, seven. Uh, the little carrot over the S means it's Tomas. Mm. Oh, God. Well, then they should put an H after the S. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Ian. I'll just get the Balkans uh, on the phone. I'm sure they'll be very yeah. responsive to that. Other languages need to adhere to English rules. Very simple English rules. Number eight, Jared Stroud. Good job. Number nine, just Klaus. Yeah, that's right. I think um, I think he technically has like four names, so I'm glad that they just go by class because that would have been a lot more difficult. <laughs> That's right. You just get one. You're like Madonna. Uh -huh. um, oh, God. Edward, number 10, Edward Lewin. Levin, but yes, close enough. Stephen, come in. Say it again. Come, let me hear that. Levin. Levin. Oh, because is he German? Yeah. 
Oh, but Steven's, Steven's real uh, close yeah. to the Germans, folks. So. Yeah, that's right. Oh. <laughs> Deep ties. That's right. Oh, God. This is probably like a simple, this is probably like simple for other people. Okay. Um, number 11, Nico. Oh, God. G. Geo. Cheney. <laughs> I honestly, so I was informed today that because well, I had been saying Giochini, and I believe that is incorrect. I believe it's Giochini or Giochini. I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you don't. <laughs> That's fine. We're gonna get all these. Someone, uh, we're gonna yeah. have our own Dan former Kelly, John SCK Kelly. player, <laughs> and we'll uh, we'll hear all these names correctly. I know his entire playing history, but I do not know how to pronounce his name. Oh, God. You know, who needs that? <laughs> can, we, can we get to some other ones? I think this for I think the second list is much easier. Um, number 12. We're going to say Cello Pompeo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Celio, Celio Pompeo. Oh, God. See, that's easy. That's Celio easy is fine. He's a great guy. He's a good player. Ian, you can get these next two, no problem. God, I hope so. Uh, number 14, John Nelson. Yeah, yeah. Did he do it? Did he get it right, Justin? Yeah, yeah I believe so. I... <laughs> number 15, Josh Yarrow. Good. I like how the picture just keeps getting bigger in our notes. Because <laughs> that could have been a D. That could have been a D. And then I would have been for shame. Um, number 16, Samuel Oh god, and and Diniron? A Dineron. A Dineron? Yeah, I did a rod. Yeah, I did a rod. Samuel Ray, yeah, Slay. What what even a Dinarod's the race, not the yeah, yeah, that's right. with all the the huskies and whatnot. Yeah. Number so 17. Dogs. Selmir Pedro. Oh yeah. You got it. Hi, right, baby. Oh god. Sweat. We're, we're going strong now. Number 18, Owen O'Malley. Uh-huh. Number 20, Akil Watts. Ian, you're on a roll. You're doing so good. <laughs> Number 21, Rasmus Alm. So Number great. 22, Kyle Hebert. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Hebert, Hebert. Number 23, John Bell. So Number great. 25, Azeel Jackson. Oh, see these. Okay, Oof, okay. We're here. number twenty six. <laughs> Tim Parker, mm-hmm. number thirty. Isaac Jensen, number thirty nine. Ben Lund. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and number forty six. Caden Glover. There we go. Yeah. All right. He did it. He did it. He did. I put it out. I am pitted. Edward Lewin was asked what his thoughts on having the number 10 was today and like the importance they put behind it. And he's like, no, it's just a number. He just like completely shook it off. So that was fun. Right. <laughs> <laughs> how dare he? Uh, and uh, Ian, how old is Caden Glover? He is 15. Oh, wow, look at you knowing stuff. I'm so proud. Uh, Justin, you were at camp today. You I was. Have spoken to bradley carnell before probably i was in the room when he spoke just like At i was in a press around when he spoke today as well so yeah Correct. <laughs> so uh tell us about how it went. all right so here are kind of my notes my observations uh it was actually like really i enjoy the views down there at the stadium uh everyone like can't stop talking about how nice all of our facilities are and everything so i think that's fun uh, Bradley Carnell said he was happy with the roster, but said they are open to one or two more additions with, we have one open DP spot. So that makes sense heading into the summer. Um, they kind of, for the end of practice scrimmage, they separated everyone into two groups. There was like a group off to the side that wasn't involved. That was like all the young kids, but Caden Glover was in the big group and uh, that was pretty cool. He looked like he belonged also. So he's like 15 year old. He's a big kid. Uh, I guess I call him kid. I don't know. I'm old, I guess. <laughs> uh, Tim Parker looked good. He seemed happy to be there, happy to be playing. Uh, Edward Lewin. Why would he not feel that way, Justin? I don't know. I think, like, <laughs> I was talking with some of the area sports guys today, and 
like after his comments because he said that we had the best facilities in the league so Mm -hmm. obviously that is 100 factual but after being at houston i think that probably explains a lot um he was it was a pretty tumultuous time while he was in houston um my other notes john bell from vancouver he isn't fully fit yet but he was kind of running around uh the practice field so he is in return to play protocol as is john klein and owen o'malley um what else but yeah i think it was fun you could tell like intensity wise it was exactly what you would expect it was like from the go it was like nonstop in practice so i think it's just something to expect that it's a very high intensity uh carnell also talked about how the sports performance side like kind of dictates how hard they can go on any given day which i thought was a cool insight but yeah Oh, that's cool. Sports performance is like such a big part of the future of sports, and I don't think about it enough. I think it's cool too that like it kind of gets taken out of the coach's hands, which I think is good in a lot of ways. Yeah, it's true. I mean, a lot depends on the coach, right? Some yeah. people not not nice uh, numbers or science folks. <laughs> they don't do them numbers good that's sometimes. Right. Them coaches. So yeah, that's that's really cool though, because I mean, it's just been like a long time coming. I feel like with every milestone, right? It feels like that was like it was. I uh, I had some genuine goosebumps standing on that practice facility. It's like I don't know something that's we talk about all the time. It's been coming for a long time, but like seeing it actually crystallize and like being on the field while they're practicing, it's uh, it was an experience for sure. It went from a uh, useless turn off of sixty four to uh, practice fields that look gorgeous. Yeah, think about what that used to be. That was a highway exit that no one ever used. And now, Ser- now seriously, from gross, from gross <laughs> to great. They could have just planted grass there. It would be nice. But yeah, like that's so cool. And I mean, it's cool that you get to see all those guys too. And um, it just solidifies that like there's an actual team here now that's going to play yeah. in less than two months or whatever. It's actually happening. Yeah, that's wild. I mean, I still can't really believe it, but I'm happy. I'm pumped. Steven, are you going to come for a game? Are you going to come back for a game? Oh, heck yes. Oh, said, heck yes. I was going to say, no, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm not actually. No, I'm not that excited. He much prefers <laughs> Jacksonville. That's right. Jacksonville. It feels like an MLS, like an MLS city, though, right? Maybe an early MLS city. Did they ever have a team? That they have the very... Armada, which, like, weren't an MLS team, but they're, like, talks that at some point they'd be going... It was like if it wasn't Miami, it would have been Jacksonville. Um, so I don't maybe know why MLS would pick Miami over Jacksonville, but maybe one day, yeah. <laughs> that out either. That's a tough, tough, tough nut to crack. I'll tell you. Maybe one day it'll happen. You know, Jacksonville is, despite all your scoffing, actually the largest city in Florida by quite a bit. <laughs> I was so, gonna, I was just gonna say that. Like, how did they not give it to the largest city in Florida? <laughs> You may say something about Miami-Dade County right now, and I'll just tell you that you're wrong and you're lying and you're mistaken. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, um, I'm. I mean, I I agree with you. I haven't been. I haven't been obviously at practice. I'm not as important as you, Justin. That's right. Um, did you wear the jersey to practice? By the no, way, no, I did not. That would have been cool, though. That would have uh, been hilarious. If I wore the kit and like <laughs> jumped out there. Walked out. <laughs> I would have. Um, been barred from all future uh sport. I, I like to think of tom timmerman and all these old dudes wearing the jersey as well i feel like yeah. you gotta wear the jersey yeah. if you want to come on the i'll field. bring this tomorrow and i'll see if he wants to wear it and get out there that's, that's right come on tom. um yeah i mean i think a lot of the one of the things that's interesting you had this note in here about edward live and saying that he is desperate to play mm. um it, some of these guys really have been like kind of in the process of joining this team for over a year now. And, yeah. you know, some of them have been in that process and playing elsewhere, but some of them really haven't been. And other guys it's like with like him and Klaus, and, yeah. it's like they went from Bundesliga to playing in like the MLS next pro to get. Yeah, some reps. So exactly. yeah, they're right. like so itching to get out there. It might, you know, still not be Bundesliga, but it's, it's a big deal. And, um, you know, February can't get here fast enough. Uh, when I walked around the stadium and went to the store to get the Jersey, um, 
a couple of weeks ago, like during Christmas, was it during Christmas or Thanksgiving? One or the other. Um, that was like a goosebumps chilling mm-hmm. experience. You know, I think this, the stadium looks so good in the city. It looks, you know, it fits perfectly. It looks great from the outside. Obviously I haven't been inside like you have yet, but um, it just feels great. It looks great. The store was really, you know, cool and modern and chic and and what I could see at the practice facility from there looked really good. So definitely really excited to see it become a reality and uh, to see this podcast, you know, get on more of a schedule and, you know, cover games and things. We've had we've had a soccer podcast for three years without a team whose games we could cover. So <laughs> pretty impressive. I don't I'm think kidding. when we started, we realized how like hard it was going to be to keep momentum when there weren't games yeah like. it's true <laughs> yeah but they to be fair they also literally added a year and yeah the they process. did add an yeah. extra year in the process so which i think you know is going to end up helping us in the end because like to yeah. segue that's a good segue steven because carnell talked about that that's what i was doing him. i was doing that on purpose yeah so. he called it a jump start about how these guys have been here for like six seven months already and it's easy to integrate guys when they already know the system and like what's expected of them so i mm-hmm. thought that was cool it looks like everyone kind of knows what's expecting, like what role they're supposed to play. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I feel like, you know, I think reasonable expectations are important. I don't think we're thinking this team's winning MLS Cup mm. or anything this year, but like not being FC Cincinnati in their first year, I think it's yeah. also an, a reasonable expectation. You know, I think like... I think between that, like the FC Cincinnati stuff and like Lutz talking about the designated team nonsense, like I think they feel like there's a pressure to like not be a joke. And, like, Talk about that a little more. Why? Are, what is that accusation? And why so it? there was an article where Lutz was, I think we talked about in the last bout, where Lutz was interviewed and he was talking about how like it was kind of taken out of context. He was like, you know, there's no one player that's better, or, like greater than the club kind of stuff. But he said that we don't have designated players. We have a designated team, which obviously we have designated players, uh, but that's been run with a bit. And I think it's very easily memeable. Uh, so mm-hmm. if we uh, don't play well right away, I could see a lot of nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> got to get in the Twitter trenches on that one. Yeah. Hey, you got to capitalize on memes when you can. If you're, if you're a losing <laughs> team, you got to have something that brings a smile uh-huh. on your face. Uh-huh. Yeah, plus there's MLS Reddit, and that has 494,000 subscribers. So there you go. And it's funny that I looked this up, because would you believe the third most upvoted story on MLS Reddit right now? Manuel Veth tweeting that uh, sources say Indiana Vasilev is close to uh, getting across the line in signing with St. Louis City SC. Uh, the deal in principle is agreed. Nice. He was drafted by St. Louis City in the expansion draft from Inter Miami, uh, where he was on loan from Villa. Villa. And uh, he is 21 years old. He could soon be called up by Bulgaria. Not a, not a nation of, of, of great and powerful nation, but it's a nation. <laughs> um, yeah, I knew it was close because like a lot of the speculation with the uh, spoiler or the tease that they put out for the Caden contract was that fast loves situation was dealt with, but it sounds like it's pretty close to being done. Yeah. I wonder if he makes an appearance with Bulgaria, but tries to get on the U S team or what happens there. But yeah, I mean, in the other exciting young player, it's a very young team. I feel for the most part. I mean, there are a couple, obviously Berkey and yeah. And, uh, you know, um, who else did I see that was like 29? A couple guys are on the older end, but feels very early to mid 20s for the most part. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to get started. Do you have more that you want to go over from today or from in general? I don't think so. Like, I think the biggest thing I wanted to like highlight was just how it seemed like everyone was like already pretty bought in. And mm-hmm. like, I kind of like Carnell's style because he's, definitely like a intense coach but it's like a positive intensity not like a wear you down yell at you intensity which is cool to see yeah that is cool i like that a lot what was i gonna look up here same with the city sc that's what 
<laughs> hard to think of stuff like that. Uh, it's a team. They start playing this year. Uh, on the fly. I'm looking up at the, you know, the content, seeing if there's anything <laughs> important that we need to cover. I didn't know Vaslev was declaring for Bulgaria. I, that's interesting. Yeah, it'd be interesting if he does actually declare or if he, you know, participates in something but isn't committed and what's that what's it called where they have to officially switch the one-time switch one-time yeah. switch OTS what uh Florian Balogun is gonna do for the U.S. soon ideally oh man I hope so I'm that not, guy is good uh, I'm not convinced <laughs> he's actually gonna but I'm not either it's, it's like, like if he did I was like that with Musa too it's like these guys that are like so sick it's yeah. like there's no way that they're actually gonna when there's like clearly a route to play in the English team, like for someone like Balogun, it's not like he's just going to be like on the outs. I don't know. Yeah. Well, here's hoping. Uh, speaking of the U.S. men's national team, some stuff has happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh this old thing. <laughs> uh, I'm so fucking done um, with this. <laughs> you know, to me, it is. You have to laugh to keep from crying, right? Yeah. Um, Everyone is familiar probably with this story by now, but uh, um, there was obviously the, I don't know, I wouldn't call it an incident, kind of controversy, uh, there's no word to describe what this is, but situation, a predicament, uh, a bit of hijinks, if you will, um, that saw- Hijinks, yeah. <laughs> Cla Claudia Reyna and his wife, um, whose name is escaping me at the moment. Danielle. Danielle. It's important for the story that we know, Danielle Reyna. Yes, very much. I, could, I just couldn't think of it. Um, hurling accusations behind closed doors and then not behind closed doors anymore at Greg Berhalter and his wife, Rosalind, um, centering on an incident that occurred in 1991, which is always good to mm -hmm. um, bring to f the f four in 2023. Um, it's good know, when 25-year-old, or yeah. 30 whatever how <laughs> uh years long time yeah, yeah. Um, so numbers <laughs> there's a there's a uh there's a timeline on the athletic which you brought here um mm -hmm. that's all started back in 1991 92 greg and rosalind uh, burhalter well she wasn't rosalind burhalter yet then but he still was well he wasn't rosalind burhalter either he was greg burhalter where you get the point <laughs> Um, they were eight. What a tangled old. web this story is. <laughs> oh, we have not yeah, even gotten we started. We haven't even started yet. <laughs> <laughs> being an idiot. Uh, they were 18 year old students at the University of North Carolina. Go Tar Heels. The statement, I don't actually believe that. That is not a real, real sentiment I hold. The statement says that four months after the pair started dating in the fall of 1991, they had an argument while out drinking at a local bar. The heated argument continued until Burr Halter said it became physical and I kicked her in the legs. He went on to uh, effusively apologize for his actions and say that they spent a long time getting over it and going to counseling and they have obviously formed and maintained a very well i mean i can't comment on the inner workings of their marriage but formed and maintained what mm -hmm. seems to be a loving and supportive marriage you know and um he explained that in the statement in 2002 burhalter and reyna who i think more or less grew up together and were in similar soccer programs mm -hmm. uh represented the u.s at the 2020 20 2002 world cup led the team to a quarterfinal uh, which was its best showing since 1930. The pair had also grown up together in New Jersey, playing youth soccer and attending St. Benedict's Prep together, starting with their sophomore years. In December 2018, Greg Berhalter was hired, and that process uh, included some other names as well. In November 2020, in his first year, uh, in his first squad of the year, he named Gio Reyna as a player, um, and he commented on Gio and Reina and Claudio being similar in some ways in the way they move around the field. They get injured every, oh, sorry. Getting injured <laughs> constantly, yeah. <laughs> Christian Pulisic and his father had that in common too. Oh, right? I'm sure they do. Yeah. 
In 2021-2022, the U.S. qualified for the World Cup. They played there. There was a lack of involvement from Gio Reyna based on a series of injuries and some questionable comments going both directions. Despite the lack of involvement, Claudia mm -hmm. spoke favorably about the direction of the program in an interview with The Athletic from November 2021. I keep saying this, but five years ago, we were all wondering, wondering what the future of the national team would look like. Now you know for so many different reasons, and a lot of people deserve credit, we've got to look at the positive. On November 9th, great Gio, Gio Reyna, man, I'm mixing these names up, was called up to the national team on November 10th through 20th. Uh, the national team prepared with uh, for the tournament in Qatar. Sources speaking with The Athletic on the condition of an anonymity stated that Reina showed an alarming lack of intensity in training, including a November 17th friendly against Alga Rafa SC, which I believe is a Qatari club level team. During this match, sources described him as a walking around throughout his time on the field during what was otherwise an intense session. It's unclear whether Reina's lack of intensity was in hopes of protecting a potential injury or if he was frustrated not being set to start the first group stage game against Wales. On November 21st, Reina was on the bench. On November 25th, they played England and he came in for the final seven minutes. On November 26th, um, what's Wijnaldum's first name? Eric Wijnaldum uh, tweeted that he thinks that Burhalter and uh, Reina, Gio, Reina have worked it out, recognized that they could have handled it better and moving on as they should. Um, and that they're focusing on the next game. On November 28th, he appeared to walk back his comments, describing his conversation with Claudio as two days talking about a kid while texting about wishing Gio could play more. He asked to dispel that he got information directly from Claudio regarding a rift between the player and the coach. He also clarifies that rather than asking Gio to go along with the notion that an injury kept him out against Wales, Burhalter instead expected the player to follow suit. So Wijnaldum's accusation was basically that Burhalter told Gio to say he was yeah. injured, and that's why it wasn't. And he's like has since walked that back, but also doubled down on it. So it's pretty cool. That's love a fun Eric. Little. Yeah, I love um, Eric Wijnaldum for that. Mm. Yeah, fun little. Uh, it's a cool guy. Yeah, double play. Yeah. <laughs> There's like a fire alarm or something going off somewhere in this apartment complex. Um, Are you safe? Are you on fire? I guess. I mean, I'm not currently on fire. Um, but this story was on fire because uh, on December 3rd, after failing to appear in the one nothing win against Iran, Reina played the full second half as the United States was eliminated against the Netherlands in the round of 16. Chasing a two-goal deficit, Reina took two shots, both off target, and sent it to sent in two crosses. At December six, two thousand on December six, two thousand twenty-two, and this is when our story really starts. This is when it all blows up. Yes, <laughs> Greg Berhalter spoke at the Howe Institute for Society Summit on Moral Leadership in New York. The U.S. soccer spokesperson would later clarify that Berhalter participated under the assumption that his comments would be explicitly off the record. Instead, many of them got published. Among those comments, he said, in this last World Cup, we had a player that was clearly not meeting expectations on and off the field. One of 26 players, so it stood out. As a staff, we sat together for hours delivering or deliberating what we were going to do with this player. We were ready to book a plane hit ticket home. That's how extreme it was. And when it came down to was, and what it came down to was, we're going to have one more conversation with him. Part of that conversation was how we're going to behave from here out. There aren't going to be any more infractions. The other thing we said to him was, you're going to have to apologize to the group, but it's going to have to say what you're apologizing. But it's going to have to say why you're apologizing. It's going to have to go deeper than just, guys, I'm sorry. And I prepped the leadership group with this. I said, okay, this guy's going to apologize to you as a group, to the whole team. And what was fantastic in this whole thing is that after he apologized, they stood up one by one and said, listen, hasn't been good enough. You haven't been meeting our expectations of a teammate and we want to see change. They really took ownership of that process. And from that day on, there were no issues with this player. As a coach, the way you can deal with these things most appropriately is going back to your values because it's difficult to send a player home. It was going to be a massive controversy. You would have been reading about it for five days straight. But we were prepared to do it because he wasn't meeting the standards of the group and the group was prepared to do it as well. Obviously, as soon as these 
words were published, everyone knew that it was Gio hmm. Reyna that he was talking about. I think like the funniest thing about this is like Greg was dumb for thinking it was off the record that you could say mm-hmm. this off the record, but it was also this like nondescript leadership, like corporate yeah. conference. And, like, yeah. it, there was like a 75% chance that these comments like don't get recorded or reported mm-hmm. to anyone, but someone decided to put this in like a, like whatever side of the media that they send out in like recap of the event, yeah. which is just like hilarious. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, on the day, on December 11th, 2002, 22, on the day which saw the Charter Newsletter transcript circulate, the Athletics' Paul Tenorio and Stan Stachel po- published details about Reyna's lack of effort early in the World Cup camp. Among the revelations of his lack of effort in the tune-up scrimmage, Reyna apologizing to his teammates for his behavior and that the players believed that they were able to move on from the sideshow. On Instagram, the next day, Gio Reyna published his reactions I'm disappointed there's cover, continuing coverage of this matter. Extremely surprised that anyone on the USM men's team staff would contribute to it. Coach Burhalter has always said that issues that arise with the team will stay in-house so we can focus on team unity and progress. I love my team. I love representing my country, and I am focusing now only on improving and growing as a soccer player and a person. I hope that going forward, each person involved in U.S. soccer focuses only what only on what is in the best interest of the men's national team so we can enjoy great success at the World Cup in 2026. So very pointed comments back at Burhalter. On just January 3rd, 2023, this kicks up again when Greg and Rosalind Burhalter issued the statement we alluded to above, suggesting basically that they were attempted to be blackmailed and so they tried, decided to come forth and own the story. Um, the U.S. soccer commented on that and said uh, that they appreciate Greg and Rosalind coming forward to speak openly about this incident. Consistent with our commitment to transparency, we will share the results of the investigation publicly when it is complete. U.S. soccer condemns violence of any kind, takes such allegations very seriously. Then on June 4th, in reports from the ESPN and The Athletic, further details emerge. In a statement to The Athletic and other media outlets, Danielle Reyna details her communications with Ernie Stewart, who is what, the president of U.S. Like the soccer? sporting director, yeah. Sporting director. Uh, and the whole series of events that unfolded after Burhalter's comments on December 6th, characterizing her conversation with Stewart, quote, I wanted to let him know that I was absolutely outraged and devastated that Gio had been put in such a de- terrible position and that I felt very personally betrayed by the actions of someone my family had considered a friend for decades. As part of that conversation, I told Ernie that I thought I was especially, it was especially unfair that Gio was still being dragged through the mud when Greg had asked for and received forgiveness for doing something so much worse at the same age. Without going into detail, the statements from yesterday significantly minimized the abuse on that night in question. It took a long time for me to forgive and accept Greg afterward, but I worked hard to give him grace and ultimately made both of them and their kids a huge part of my family's life. Um, Danielle continued her comments. At the time I called Ernie, many people were trashing G on social ma- media. I don't know when or if this would stop. Just wanted Ernie to help make sure that there would be no further unwarranted attacks on my son. Thought our conversation were made in confidence. Well, so did Greg Verhalter. And it didn't occur to me that at the time that anything I said could lead it's to- It's also like, the, we just got done, or like when this happened, like they're in the midst of the NWSL investigation, which is U.S. soccer's investigation into like coaching abuse in uh-huh. soccer. So you're making this comment to the sporting director of U.S. soccer thinking, eh, it'll be nothing. <laughs> yeah. Like, where's the fucking logic there? Yeah, exactly. Um she continued on a long quote here and um, claimed that no one else in my family has made any comments to U.S. soccer regarding Greg's past at all. Claudio added a comment. I support my wife, Danielle, in her statement. I, too, was upset by Greg's comments about Geo after the U.S. was out of the World Cup. And I also appealed to Ernie Stewart on December 11th, asking him to prevent any additional comments. But by saying that, he went against the part of his wife's statement that said nobody else commented on this. Um, I didn't comment. And, I just commented. Right? <laughs> yeah. uh, while in Qatar, Claudia said, I shared my frustrations about my son's World Cup experience with a number of close friends, Ernie and Brian McBride among them. However, at no time did I ever threaten anyone, nor would I ever do so. U.S. soccer also announced 
the Fur Halter's assistant, Anthony Hudson, will lead the men's journey January camp as they continue to determine if Fur Halter or another coach will lead the team to the 2026 mm-hmm. World Cup cycle. That was a lot, um, but if anyone hadn't heard the story, I wanted to make sure they had the full context. What say you guys? <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> it was um, a little crazy to see people on Twitter before like this all broke being like, oh, there's been, there's some blackmail going on. And they're like, and it's like, they already knew, but couldn't say anything. Like there was a retainer. Yeah, like, I like the like, teasing of the blackmail reveal. That was yeah, they're like, you just wait to <laughs> see who it is. And I was like, what? I was like, I don't see this in any other sports or like some shit's been going down, but I'll tell you about that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, um, and then the it just eye. felt like every day was something new for like three or four days. I think we need to bring Wayne Rooney in personally. Get Colleen <laughs> Rooney on the case. We should <laughs> for analysis. That's right. Heavily pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. I just think it's so dumb. And it's like Geo shouldn't be punished for how insane his parents seem to be on this, but like I just know he will be because of the backlash and like the conversation surrounding it and the fact that it's not a competitive window at all. I guess we're like, like, I don't think European players get called in in January anyway, but yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a mess. It's a bit of a mess. I mean, uh, there's so many tendrils here to talk about. For one thing, Gio obviously shouldn't be punished for his parents' behavior. He deservedly will be punished for his own behavior. But I think it's like, punished. like, that's the thing of it. It seemed like they had dealt with that already. And like everything yeah, was no, settled. I, and quiet, no, I agree. And then... <laughs> I agree with you. I feel like, this is very much a situation where those comments that were made that Burhalter thought were in private shouldn't have been made mm. because um, they weren't in private and he got caught. Because it very much was not. It was out of public forum. Yeah. <laughs> um, with that said, um, I also think there's a situation here now where I don't see how um, I don't see how Geo and Greg could possibly coexist at any point. No, I think Greg Berhalter is pretty much gone. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know how he couldn't be. They, I guess, they can't really announce anything while he's under investigation, and like these investigations take a long time. So, like at best, if you're going to rehire Berhalter, you're waiting like eight months to do so, and that seems like far too much time before hiring mm-hmm. the next coach. Yeah. The uh, So they held a press conference to discuss this. And it was basically like, I think they were holding the press conference to think that people were going to be asking about the coaching search and not about the Raina Berhalter scandal that had just broken because they seemed completely taken aback that there were so many questions being asked about it. <laughs> There's a lot of no comment, and I cannot comment while it's under investigation going on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, U.S. soccer is a mess. I was like, if this if it wasn't a mess already. <laughs> so those are my thoughts. Cool. It makes for it makes for good drama. It does. I don't know. Fun. I mean, it's this is how it would be written right they'd be like if someone was in a blackmail it would be the parents of a player who like didn't play or whatever and they'd be like yeah that makes sense but yeah. so you wouldn't expect that to actually happen and it did yeah i mean everyone's dumb here i don't think anyone comes out of this looking good like right. it's like everyone just gets dragged through the mud like there is no winner in this that's right i agree justin were you wearing a blue hooded sweatshirt today i was yeah Let's post a photo of you. Am I in the photos? Oh yeah. Oh, oh you're getting doxxed. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm famous. First ever MLS training for St. Louis City SC on a warm sunny day with plenty of media getting a little sneak preview. Ooh, it was and warm and sunny. It's from behind, but I quickly picked you out from behind, which is creepy. Now this is <laughs> awesome. um, you know. I'm not good at asking questions. Yeah, please, please don't. The, the less said about that, the better. Tom Timmerman looks like an old old man hey he's fine he's a good guy he's a good guy i didn't say he's not a good guy he's great leave him alone (laughs) right cut cut this out ernie cut cut that cut that
Our producer's name is Ernie. Um, <laughs> uh, Steven, yeah. is Ernie in the room right now? That's right. <laughs> He's right behind me. Did you not see him right over here? Um, Ian, we got to talk about this later. There's the bit, <laughs> We've already been fired. <laughs> there's a part of this that I think is crazy because every time it feels like we're finally a real uh soccer nation like we're I mean, a real if, national team if we, we wanted have... to be more like france is it right yeah like... <laughs> this, is, this isn't exactly how i wanted to be more like france but i would i could have done with just having a kelly and Mbappe of our own but like i'll take it you know it's a start it's a start now we just need a witch doctor involved somehow or something mm. you know Somehow, witchcraft. yeah, I think like the next step of this scandal is the rain has hired a witch doctor. To yeah, yeah, for sure. Break alter. Definitely agree with that. Um, but no, I mean, it's such a sad story. It's so dumb. People are so, <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> I mean, this is just embarrassing. Everyone, and I, I, I really think like Greg Berhalter basically did nothing wrong here, right? Except... Mm. I can't even say, I mean, obviously he did the awful thing back then, but that's 30 years ago. Greg yeah. Moore. And he was like naive and like I, I said, dumb I to talk firmly, about. Yeah. I <laughs> firmly believe that it, the people, the same person 30 years apart is not the same person, you know, right. like a, years, you're not the same person you were as an 18 year old as you are as a 48 year old. Right. Let alone. Fair. Yeah. Let alone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that, you know, you can talk about that. Obviously, if there's any, indication that that behavior has continued then yes that's a very different story but like they worked it out they had a relationship they've been married for 25 years nothing about that bothers me he was pretty dumb though to make the comments that you couldn't like you can he might as well have just said geo right it's like right <laughs> yes you think those comments aren't getting out but there's like no part of that that could have no they one paying possibly like, be um, interpreted. Yeah, no was one he, got, like was he talking about Tim Ream or <laughs> Gio Reyna? You know, like, oh, is that Zach Steffen that he was talking about? Like, yeah. who's getting, you know. No one paying like a little bit of it, like the least amount of attention yeah. would know. <laughs> right, exactly. So that that's foolish. Obviously, you know, I mean, it just is not a good look to, I know Gio Reyna is 18. He's still basically a kid or 19 now, I think, but um so the other that leads to like the other dumb part of this is like in oh, i forget if it's in forgive. claudio or danielle's statements where or i think it's claudio's where he's like i just wish that greg would have given geo the grace that we gave him when he was 18 but it's like those are nowhere close to the same level of intensity of <laughs> like the grace of not giving it your all in a practice game versus like getting in a fight with your girlfriend those are not the same yeah <laughs> yeah and i mean i that's what i think is just like embarrassing that he you know i and again i don't know that he was involved i don't know that he isn't you know ashamed that his parents did this but like to have your mommy come to the rescue when you're like already an international soccer star you're like a, a, this i feel bad for this young millionaire <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's not the best look um Anyway, I, you know, hopefully that saga gets put behind USMNT sooner rather than later. I did want to see them not rehire Greg Berhalter, but I didn't want it to have to be because of this. Yeah, um, I think like I think it's best like it's best for Berhalter to move on too. Like I think oh he's sure the lessons that he's learned and go to club soccer or whatever. Yeah, but, I hope so. Like I don't um, know why you'd want to be around this again. Like if you are Greg, like sure, unless you're sure. a masochist, like why would you want to suggest yeah. yourself to this? Yeah, there's no reason. <laughs> there's all the scrutiny. You can go, you know, manage the quakes or something and not have to deal with this crap. You know what I'm saying? Like seriously. Go, uh, yeah, go manage Burnley. Go live in San Jose for a few years and don't Ooh, travel that's the, the life, world. Maybe. Don't travel the world to scout like French. Seconds. Is there any better situation than managing the middling MLS team that is San Jose? I can't imagine that. <laughs> San Jose is like, it's unreal. How that's why they're never good. I think is everyone yeah. just out there enjoying the weather. That's right. I Not mean, being impacted by the cold. Yeah. Ever. Literally ever. There's no cold. Um, so that's that story. Let's <laughs> talk about the Premier League. I'd, I'd rather not talk about the Premier League personally, but others on this podcast. Uh, yeah, uh, Christian Pulisic is out two months as of today. So that's yeah, cool. I mean, that's not news. That's every week. I don't, you know, like, 
What do you say about it? It's it sucks. I wish he was. I think it's like it comes at a bad time because he had just started the past three games for Chelsea yeah. and was actually like working his way into Grand Potter's like good graces, you feel like, and then he just gets hurt. I'm like a good run too. It was bad. Uh-huh. Um upsetting. The current top four as it stands, Arsenal leading by five points. Everyone had that written in Sharpie mm-hmm. at Absolutely. the start of the season. Manchester. We all knew that the title chase was going to be Arsenal, Man City, and Newcastle. Yeah, yeah. Man City mm-hmm. behind them, 39 points, uh, 17 games played, both of those. Newcastle United. You know what's interesting about Newcastle, which is kind of funny to me? Obviously, they've had the infusion of, um, is it Saudi money or Emirati? Yeah, it is Saudi money, yes. Let's get know. our sovereign wealth funds right here. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> obviously, they've had the influx of Saudi money, but... Uh, it doesn't feel like that's really impacted the roster to a huge degree yet. No, yeah, a lot of this and, is Miggy Almiron just playing great, and that's yeah. a pre pre oil takeover. Yeah, bid. so like, <laughs> which is is frightening. Then when you think about what happens mm-hmm. when the money actually does kick in, they've had thirty two goals, they've allowed only eleven. Very good season for them. Man, you. Setting at four, the U, as people call them. People call them the U, right? I don't I don't believe so, but I'll inquire. I'll... People call them the U. I know they do. I know they call them the U. Don't lie to me. Zai, Eric Ten Hag just actually putting some consistency back into the team. Uh, I may have asked this before, but I feel it must be asked. What happened to Eric Nine Hog that I think, suddenly... Steven, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe you make that joke every podcast yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure and that's, it's very okay. numbers that's okay with me because it's a ridiculous thing. and i don't care that he's from another uh, did gonna... you know when you search eric nine hog eric ten hog comes up so just so you know that sucks <laughs> what about eric eight hog oh i don't know do we remember him um Tottenham Hotspur, nobody cares about them, but they're in Oh, I'm just kidding, Ian. I'm Eric Ten Hag also comes up when you search Eric Day Hog, by the way. I do like how when you look at the Premier League table, they have the four green spots for um, Champions League, and then they have the blue bar for what if one of those four teams wins mm-hmm. the Champions League? Right. Um, what happened? Here's a question. Do, uh, all like Let's say, theoretically, this isn't going to happen. Mm-hmm. I want to be very clear. But let's say, theoretically, Liverpool doesn't move up the table and wins the champions league then is it still the top four that also yeah it'd be liverpool and the top four yeah okay got it's like the winner plus the other four from their federation okay so it's only if uh it's only if like if arsenal were to win the europa league (laughs) (laughs) no 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 no. um do you qualify for the champions league if you win europa league um you back do you qualify for your i think you just qualify for the europa league Okay. Keep um, talking. I'll look this up. No, you're good. Uh, Tottenham playing very well, 33 points. Their strategy of playing relatively poorly and extremely boring soccer, but having Harry Kane score one goal, is continuing to pay off for them. How do you feel about that uh, play style, Ian? Um, is it fun? Is it exciting? No. I mean... <laughs> Ian, I know you're a loyal man. If you could pick your soccer team over again... No! Okay. All right. I just want no, to I must suffer. <laughs> That's my thing. So um, you can't bet against Tottenham in the second half, though. You'd be a fool to, except for half the time. Mm-hmm. Except for the half the time where they don't come back. In the I'm going to interject here because a bunch mm-hmm. of people are yelling at the speakers. A bunch of cats are meowing loudly because the Europa League winner does go to the Champions League group stage. So now you guys. Oh. Know. So is there a situation where six people from the? Premier I guess could right. Like if. Uh, if Premier like team Aston wins. Villa wins the Europa League, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then Liverpool wins the Champions League, I guess so, right? I, yeah, I mean, I would think so. I would think that would have to be six. Someone, cats out there, let us know. Yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, Ian, you were saying about Tottenham. How do you feel? Everything good? Everything good? No, I said you can't bet against them in the second half, except for the half half of the time when you can, but the, a quarter. <laughs> Of the whole game, at any given time, they'll play well. They'll play offensive and exciting. Um, I don't know. It's just it's bothersome because it seems like they have within them to play up tempo, like an attacking game. You see it in the second half. 
Uh, but Conte wants them playing his system, and I guess props to him because they play it. They <laughs> certainly play it. <laughs> they don't not do that. Um, I mean, it's only when the game opens up and or they're behind that Spurs starts to play like a more exciting game. Um, you see him play defensively in the first half, and they try to square off the counterattack. It's Kane and Son, but then you know if that counterattack gets stifled, or they perhaps hit the post, or hit play, you know shoot center of mass or whatever. Now there's there's nothing left uh, for them, at least when it comes to the first half of the game. Um, you know I'll give Spurs credit for I watched them play Crystal Palace, four nothing victory. Uh, they didn't slowly build into their attack in that second half. They came right out and played uh played the win so uh, i give them that it was a 4-0 win second half was a lot of fun uh i want Conte gone <laughs> this, 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 this is, is really fine like, win. so a really fine point on the end <laughs> uh Atletico madrid is moving on from diego simeone it seems like and i asked the question of like if because simeone is the same way where it's like soccer terrorism almost it's like uh <laughs> If this guy could win your team the Champions League, but you had to like suffer him for eight years, which you won at your club, and like the resounding answer was no. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'd, rather, I'd rather enjoy watching soccer and lose. I think so too. Like I don't think, like I don't know. Like maybe if it's for City, a team that I like care about deeply, but like I would want to watch entertaining soccer. I think, like with with the Blues, when, when the Blues are bad and not entertaining, I don't watch as much. So I guess that's the answer. Yeah, yeah, like that's true. I mean, it's like if I was more entrenched, mm. if it was like the Blues or whatever, and I was like, man, just win no matter. I don't care if it's one nothing games, like all the way to the cup, you know, play Islanders shitty hockey, like just win the cup. And I get like Tottenham, as far as I know, is number one Premier League, but like not being quite as entrenched. I'm like, I just want to have fun when I sit down and watch these mm. guys play. And when it's like, ah, but they're gonna they're gonna try and suffer their way to a, to a victory, and I'm like, it's it's good enough to be top five, or you know, I'm sure they'll stay in the top seven or eight teams. But I'm like, but it's not winning you the league. You're not even gonna be possibly in the Champions League the next year. So like, what are we? What are you doing? What are we what doing? Are we, what are we doing here? <laughs> You're like one of the top six teams, which I find sort of annoying because i'm like yeah they they're very fun and they spend a lot of money i'm sure but it's like i i do really feel like tottenham out of like the, the quote-unquote top six or big six are like they're they're like we're top we're part of the big six we're like yeah well it would be big five if you'd they're just they're yourself. happy they're happy to be there though they're really yeah. happy to be there it's when you're when you say <laughs> our restaurant's top 11 in st louis and you're like okay well <laughs> why'd you say top 11 <laughs> <laughs> uh it used to be the big four but now it's the big six because tottenham's there so yeah that's right right. and newcastle yeah (laughs) and 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 newcastle please see i don't i think (laughs) i don't imagine them being there regularly but how that's got to be so sad in the premier league when you're like a team that's struggling and you're in the top you know big six or whatever and some other team like supplants you're like oh, i guess it's easy now for us and you're like, oh my god why it's like yeah. uh chelsea sitting back there in 10th place like what do they do they're not even sniffing the champions league right now okay. and they're supposedly in the big six so yeah so moving on from tottenham let's go straight to seven <laughs> fulham and wait steven steven you're skipping one right and home albion with 27 <laughs> points and eight i'm certain i haven't seen liverpool on here but i'm certain there's something they're, they're right there you just moved right past them. <laughs> <laughs> that's six, very that's very strange that you did to miss it but... sixth place with 17 games played 28 points liverpool they've won four in a row i don't know what you're so sad last. about yeah. you got darwin nunez playing soccer Listen, Darwin <laughs> Nunez is the least of our problems, and I will slam my fist on the table and demand that people acknowledge that. This team doesn't have a midfield. There are MLS teams with a better midfield than oh, the freaking Liverpool SC right now. There's nobody there. They <laughs> only got about one MLS. midfielder, <laughs> and they refuse to start him getting this Navi Keita. James Milner's hurt. Jordan Anderson is getting older and not as great. Tiago, right. but here's the thing if you're relying on James Milner, <laughs> I, a, I, I agree with you, I agree with you completely. Tiago is obviously phenomenal at doing Tiago things, but right now we need some beefy boys that can, you know, slap meat against the competition and prevent 
defense prevent uh, opposing midfielders from just running all over us. Yeah, Ingalu Blonde type, I believe. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly who we need. And they're not getting it. They don't show any signs that they're going to go out and get it. Meanwhile, they're all in on Jude Bellingham. And listen, I want Jude Bellingham as much as the next guy. I really hope we get Jude Bellingham. But uh, that's putting all your eggs in one basket. And I've been told you're not supposed to do that. Um, So Mm -hmm. I really just, it's frustrating to see them go through another January market. Like they went and got Cody Gakpo. That's great. I think he's a phenomenal player. I think they played good value on Cody Gak, but a yeah, really good I, price like for him. They didn't they didn't go out and get, you know, hosed by a World Cup overpay, much of which Chelsea is trying to do with Enzo Fernandez. Um I'm very happy about that, but they have to spend on this midfield. And Jude Bellingham alone cannot be the solution. Needs to be Jude Bellingham and at least one other very good, like 30 to 40 to 50 million dollar midfielder, and preferably a third project or somebody that you can bring in. Mm. And just, you know, which is and that's what's weird to me is Liverpool, you know, they wouldn't they they splash money when they knew they had the right guy, right? They splash money on Allison, they splash money on Virgil van Dyke. Um, they spent, uh, a lot of money on a few other players. And for the most part, when they've done that, they've been dead on the money, you know, really the only exception that immediately comes to mind is Kaida, who I don't think it's entirely his fault. I don't think he's been used particularly well by the team, but they spend the big money when they feel confident they have, they have the right guy. But what they used to do that they haven't done is they get the projects like Andrew Ro- Andy Robinson Robertson, who they spent like $8 million on. And now he's the all-time leading assist leader in the Premier League from a defensive position, I think. You know, and he's phenomenal. Obviously one of the best left backs in the entire world and maybe yeah. even, even as much as the second best left back in Scotland. No, I'm just kidding, but... Uh, that is weird that Scotland has no <laughs> players on their national team. Except for like three world-class left backs. <laughs> um, but it's just, it's, they haven't done that. They've really, really screwed up the midfield now. Um, I, I don't think they qualify for Champions League if they don't go out and get at least one body they can play in the midfield right now. And I don't think they're going to do it because I've I've seen Fenway Sports Group do this before. I don't think they're going to do it. Mm. They spent money on Cody Gakpo. That's great. Um, but they have Brighton this week. They have the Wolves rematch, which is another game they shouldn't have lost and don't need to be playing an extra game uh, in the middle of the week next week. Their, uh, their injury list is shocking also. Yeah. That's I mean, part of the yeah, issue. Listen, they've gotten very screwed by injuries. It's really bad. Virgil's out now for a month. Oof, that's bad. That's not good at all. <laughs> really bad. Um, oh no. Luis Diaz has been out much longer than we thought he would. Um, I mean, we can bring it up. Liverpool injuries. Let's see. I mean, it's been ugly. James Milner's out. I know, I know how you love James Milner. 37-year-old James Milner. Boy, do I love um, some James Milner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's see where we're at. Diogo. Does Dada it worry is- you that Fulham is the team right behind you? In an existential sense, yes. In a, yeah. do I believe Fulham's going to over, actually overtake Liverpool? Not really, you know? So, I don't know. It's just frustrating, man. It's fr- frustrating when the p- solution's so obvious and they are, they're, they have this weird thing of, like, they're both too picky and not picky enough at times. Mm. It's like, you know, they went out and got Mello, Arthur Mello, on a transfer he hasn't been healthy all season or like ever um and um it's just frustrating because it's like if they want to save all their money for jude fine they'd better commit to still spending that money if they don't get the champions league money you know because they're not gonna it seems like that's what it's all hinging on it seems like they're just waiting because like it's going to take a lot of money to hit his buyout or whatever his uh, release clause so like it does feel like they're like consolidating a bit yeah and that's listen if they if they're good to finish fifth through ninth or somewhere in there and sign g bellingham and other pieces again i can't stress that enough then great i don't care 
you rebuild more or less for a, a summer, you know, but like it's going to be so good, but they yeah. do need like some defensive midfield help and Jude Bellingham is not that decisively. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's, I was listening to a Liverpool podcast the other day and they were talking about like one of the fears about Bellingham is a, he's so good at so many things that they're worried that Liverpool is doing exactly what we fear that they're doing where it's like, Oh, he can just do all the things for us. And it's like, no, he can't yeah. do all the things. Cause he's still only one guy that can start in one. Position. I mean, they tried to do that with Tiago, right? When they bought Tiago yeah. and they thought he was going to do everything, which yeah. he can and, do most of it. But, <laughs> and so, you know, Fabinho has gotten older. They haven't, I think that's what other than in, other than in the front three where they now have, uh, you know, Jada and um, Diaz and Gakpo, who's basically a whole new front three. Other than mm. that, they have not done a good job of supplementing with youth, you know, bringing guys up so that they're not in a position where they have to be called on right now. Like Harvey Elliott. I think it's almost. Mm. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, it's almost like they were anticipating replacing like some guys, but not everyone else. Yes, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and Harvey Elliott shouldn't be your, you know, go-to everyday midfielder. He's very good. I think he's going to be a great soccer player, but he shouldn't be there yet. And they've let so many people leave on a free, so many people. And when they claim to want to be a money-in, money-out club, that just doesn't make any sense. And they're going to do it this this summer. Like, huh? Say that so it's not good asset management. Yeah, exactly. They're going to do it again this summer with with probably Kaita and Milner and Oxlade Chambers. And the plus side of that is you get a lot of, um, you know, salary off the books. But the downside is you don't actually make a transfer fee. So, <sighs> um, anyway, that's uh, that's my <laughs> rant on Liverpool. Not that I'm you're very- bothered by it. You're not bothered. I'm very, me it's just frustrating to feel like <laughs> I the solution is pretty <laughs> obvious and they're not gonna go do it. It's one thing, like, you know, it's such okay, a that's how I felt about United last year. It's like it's clear that the issue is the guy in charge, and then yeah, what do you know? It's it's one thing when um you know, in in hockey, we're we're all hockey fans, obviously. There's another podcast on this network that's about hockey. It's one thing when you need a piece, but you can't you can't just go like buy um mm. uh, i'm trying to think of a cornerstone defenseman uh kale mccarr you know you can't just pay enough money to go get kale mccarr and obviously in a in an analogous situation where kale mccarr was a soccer player his team probably wouldn't sell him but you could get a pretty good defenseman you know and just mm. have um it's it's just frustrating to see liverpool who make so much revenue and even if they want to be money in money out like defenders are the cheaper option too if like you want to go out and buy a game changing defender that's gonna be cheaper than going after a jupe bellingham or like an actual attacking player too like they're pretty undervalued so i get i get what you're saying it's just upsetting i the last thing i will say though on on nunez i think he's i've watched him obviously more closely lately i think he looks really good. I mean, he's so frightening. That pass, well, I think I, I think you and I talked about that. The goal he scored against, oh, yeah, where he takes it down like one touch, and yeah. it's like not an easy ball. To the take run down and the touch. He's got. He's just a beat. I mean, he's big, but he's faster than anyone else on the field. I think he's fine. It, the finishing to me is not. If he can make runs like that, and you know, I think the finishing will come along. Trent Alexander-Arnold also, like, I mean, everybody talks about him, but I still don't think he's talked about enough with just how, like, insanely, insanely good he is. He makes world-class passes every freaking game, you know, that that other right-backs would make once a season or once a career, maybe, you know? It's insane. So that's my rant about Liverpool. I apologize. But I tried to to skip him. You made me come back, so it's on you. (laughs) We asked for (laughs) <laughs> so, if in, anything blame me yes i did in ask ninth, in ninth place brentford who you know just beat liverpool and they beat him by bullying him in the midfield they had bigger guys in the midfield and they were at home and they had the better atmosphere. i feel like every team on this list is going to trigger you from here on out <laughs> no no we're good with chelsea <laughs> and christian pulisic and dead 
Aston Villa. Chelsea, like, oh, and I need to stop on Chelsea for a moment because I do not understand what the fuck is going on there. So they need, like, I don't even know what they need, but they keep buying players that are the same player that they just bought, and it makes yeah. no sense to me whatsoever. And Chelsea, now they're going to bring in Jao Felix, who is, like, ruined at Atletico under, like, the same exact system that Graham Potter runs. It's mind-boggling, Steven. Yeah, Chelsea... Not me, that I want them to be good. I'm happy that they're not. I but... genuinely <laughs> think they're, they're the worst run club in, <laughs> in Premier League. I, what they're doing makes no sense. Pursuing Enzo Fernandez makes no sense. No sense. Yeah. Pursuing no sense. Joe Felix makes zero sense. Joe Felix is just Timo Werner also that they already yeah. sent away. <laughs> Timo, Timo Werner is just Christian Pulisic and Christian Pulisic is just the last guy. Like they spend so much money and then they give these guys like two appearances in the team. And then when they don't work out, they devalue them by putting them on the bench. You know, mm-hmm. it's so weird. Um, and uh yeah I, anyway they've signed other people this transfer window too and it's just like all right whatever guys you know like whatever you want to do uh, anyway aston villa in 11 22 points crystal palace 22 points leicester city 17 i uh in my fifa career mode where i'm managing fortuna dusseldor i'm in like probably 2027 2028 oh. somewhere in there that's when it starts getting crazy because if you had a good academy my champions league final opponent is Leicester City. Okay. So <laughs> well <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm what's gonna, happening there? I'm gonna rip them apart. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna open up that game and it's gonna be like Killian Mbappe and you know <laughs> oh freaking Kevin De Bruyne and all these people. Uh Leeds United holding it down in 14th um 17 points not totally safe from relegation. I would like them to have you know maybe 20 points but I think they're okay because I think they're I think the relegation teams really suck and um we'll talk about them in a minute but nottingham forest 17 points they've had a good little stretch um did they they didn't beat man U, but they beat somebody pretty significant they beat liverpool obviously i know that much. they've had some i think like they're just like norwich was a couple of years ago it's like they're good against everyone except for like the big teams and they mm-hmm. show up and like actually play them well like nottingham forest like of all the teams that are around that relegation zone, like they're the ones I probably feel the best about, like not actually being relegated, but they also have completely like fixed, like changed their squad around. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, they no, they lost to Man United. Yeah, they beat Southampton. They tied Chelsea. Tied Chelsea. So you had to be happy with four. Uh, they beat Tottenham two nothing. <laughs> What's Tottenham? Oh, well, that counterattack. So good. Except it's not so good. There you go. Uh, AFC Bournemouth is in 16th place with 16 points. Very nice. West Ham nice. United, 17th place, 15 points. And Everton, who will be relegated. They're bad. <laughs> They're bad. They're real shockingly bad. They have, oh. They only survived last year because Richarlison did everything for them. And now they yeah. don't. Anymore, so. No, like that was clearly Rich Arlson is just a lot better than we thought he was. Uh, yeah, I like I knew that they were bad. I hadn't watched them recently until they played the uh, Carabao Cup game against Manchester United, and I watched that and like it's it's not good. This team is has no chance. They're <laughs> getting relegated. <laughs> um, and uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers nineteenth, fourteen points. Southampton twentieth. 12 points. I think all three of those teams are probably going down. I feel bad about Southampton for sure going down. If those are the three teams that go down, there are three. And Wolves recently, for sure, like Premier League perennial teams, like Southampton and Everton have both been in the Premier League for a million years. Yeah. See them them be the teams that could go down and not Bournemouth or Nottingham. Yeah. Yeah. Be interesting. Um am I cutting out a lot? You were cutting out a little bit. <laughs> I was cut I was tracking most of it. Okay. Cool. Uh but yeah that's the Premier League table. That's a, that's everything we have in our in our lives to cover here, I believe. Um oh obviously um there's a big soccer news which we haven't talked about. Uh Cristiano Ronaldo signing for 250 million dollars. <sighs> Just 
just stopping short of signing with Kansas City Sporting Kansas City. Okay. Can we talk about how ridiculous that story is? I there's no way in hell that was. They called it close. This thing was not even like remotely close. I think it was like there are people talk to Ronaldo's people probably, and that's what they're considering close. I believe I they took him <laughs> one pound of barbecue from yeah. That I mean hell I, that place I, I where do a lot of things for. Yeah, exactly. That place where Ian saw Sotaguchi that one time. Oh, and, that's right. Um, where, where was this, Ian? <laughs> that's like one of that's one of the big ones. It starts with a B. Was it I? Brands? I, Arthur, Arthur Brands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was there. It was crazy. He was there for the big guy. I'm... coverage <laughs> in Japan. <Yes. laughs> Sotaguchi. Hey, number 99. I remember that's you. Right. <laughs> Everybody remembers Sotaguchi. What? I have a shirt. Oh, doesn't fit no more, good. but you know. Is there anyone that has like more of an outsized impact on the community that probably like had one effective season for the Huns? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I guess David Freeze, if you want to get real. Oh, David Freeze, <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> in, no, that's the correct. Did answer. you speak to him in Japanese? Did you? Uh, make... No, no, no. I would never. I would never do that. That would be hilarious if you had. I'd say itadakimasu. Um, and he'd is, be like, "What's you know, that?" This is what you say before you eat, but he wasn't there to eat. He was there to report <laughs> yeah, on the fair <laughs> on the on the field that he wasn't allowed to eat. Um, yeah, I mean, what is there to say other than Cristiano Ronaldo obviously prides money over his legacy, and that's fine. Do you think it's true that he had lots of offers from the team that chose to sign for Al Nasser because uh, he believed in the project? Do you think that's true? I don't think that's true. I think he had offers from teams that have a lot more reputation than uh, Al Nasser. Um, I think it's I think my take on it. I think that he did have a lot of offers, but it was for a lot of money and for a downsized role, which yeah, that's exactly. famously is why he left United because he didn't want right. to do that. So once that was off the table and you have this team offering you $225 million, I think that's pretty safe to understand what happened there. I believe. Yeah, and listen, <laughs> it's his business. I don't, it's not my, you know, people, you, you talk about Saudi Arabia all you want. I, I agree with all, all the anti-Saudi Arabia takes. That's fine. And you can talk about legacy all you want. That's also, I agree with. But yeah, I, I see where your point's going. And it's true that it's not like Ronaldo was ever like this good person that's ruining his yeah. legacy by going to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's like people are like, well, how could he work for a human rights abuser? And it's like, I don't know, man. Have you seen anything else, Cristiano Ronaldo? Right. Do you, <laughs> have you followed his career at all? This is very odd. I did, see, I, did, <laughs> I did see a great meme that was like, <laughs> that, that apparently he got, Saudi Arabia to change or or like at least make an exception to its life has a law about non non married couples cohabitating and he got Sick. them to bring that law and I saw me in the <laughs> cool. what a great country oh, yeah. I love it <laughs> they had that headline and it was like something like if he's actually making the country change its laws to avoid marrying you girl <laughs> you know, like, yeah yeah that's a good um, but. Yeah, I mean, leave him. Leave him. He won't even make the country change their laws. Leave it, man. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, anyway, that's that's basically what I've got. You know, mm. uh, I I think take your two hundred and fifty million dollars if that's the most important thing for you. Listen, and we kind of joked about it before the podcast. Ain't nobody ever ever offered me two hundred and fifty million dollars to do anything. You know, money to turn down. Let's just yeah. say that. Yeah. <laughs> That's like generational life changing money. That's like set your family up for life money. Yeah. I saw a TikTok the other day that was like a, a woman asked her, her boyfriend or husband or whatever, would you cheat on me for a billion dollars? And he was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, got all mad with Adam. And he was like, you are not even like, this is not even a question. You are out of your mind. Um, it's like but, hard for me to even conceptualize how much money that is. It's so much money. It's insane. I was thinking about that yesterday. I was looking at Shad Khan, actually. <laughs> it was talking about how he had, you know, I, I forget how much. It was like 80. Billion. Famous uh, Fulham co-owner, Shad Khan. Yeah, exactly. Keep, Shad, keep it on brand. <laughs> uh, it said he had 
he says personal net worth is $11 billion. And when I think of $11 billion, I'm like, that doesn't sound like that much money. Like in my head, 970 million sounds like more than 11 billion, just because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm oh. a simple animal. One number is bigger than the other number. That's so right. that makes sense to me. <laughs> then I was looking through this and it was like, it's like, um, owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, owner of Fulham FC, co-owner of All Elite Wrestling, owns a super yacht that he travels the world in that has its own Wikipedia article. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and I'm like, Dope. <laughs> I'm like, this is an inconceivable amount of money, you know? And uh, it's just funny to think about that kind of thing. And, and uh, Here's what I don't understand about people with that much money. If I had that much money, you would not hear from me ever. I would... I would not be heard from at all if I had that much money. And yet these guys are out here That's talking true. nonsense, buying Twitter. Don't understand it. <laughs> I know. I'd just be a quietest billionaire. I'd be like, I don't want anyone to know I have this. I'm just going to go live in the woods. Don't pay any attention to me and my yeah. weird pursuits. <laughs> That's right. This guy spends a lot of money. I see him Why did he buy so many pigeons? This is strange. <laughs> He has a $1 million dollar owl owns, budget. <laughs> owns a house in Naples, Florida, and I'm sitting here thinking, Naples is like five hours from Jacksonville. Why doesn't he own something closer? It's like the dude can just hop in a helicopter, and he's there. Or a plane, PJ, private jet, baby. It yeah. would be weird to like have like a pilot to be like, yeah, I'm this guy's pilot. Mm -hmm. And you'd be like, here's yeah, what so I, I completely employ you. <laughs> here's what I envision for myself with $11 billion, is that I'd be... A really famous scientist, you know, trying to put humanity on the right path, but somewhere down the line, I get corrupted. And now I didn't, this is not what I meant to do when I set out for it, but yeah, it's just kind of how it happened. And next round, a team of superheroes to come take me down and the whole thing. So it's probably good that I don't have that money. Next thing you know, you release the next pandemic virus <laughs> because you already have the vaccine in store and you need to get people to. Right. Really infected before you wake up, people. Come on, <laughs> pay attention. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, I could sit here and shame Christian Pulisic for a lot of things all day, but the fact of the matter is, I've never been asked to do anything for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Like Cristiano Ronaldo, not Christian Pulisic, by the way. Well, I could, <laughs> but he can also shame him too. But we're also going to. <laughs> but um, this is the one people learn to, learn to take a corner. Yeah. Exactly. Don't. So, Sorry, go ahead, Justin. Don't get uh, me started on it. I, I I said, don't even... <laughs> um, we uh, have covered a lot today. We, we're through our notes. Justin's internet is slowly dying. Uh, it really is. All up there. This is a concord for you. I don't know what to say. That's right. <laughs> Soccer is, is coming soon to St. Louis City, a St. Louis City city near you, a St. Louis, St. Louis city near you. <laughs> but uh, until then, we will be back soon, I'm sure, with a lot more to talk about, and we will see you all, or hear you all, or I guess just talk to you all later. Adios. See ya. <laughs>